number of mosques in America growing. So this is a plot twist from our last news where Christian Wait, let me let me finish. Told you. Yeah. Okay, so this yeah. is a plot twist. Last news was Protestant churches are closing faster than they're opening. So they have a declining birth rate. Well, on the reverse, we have the number of mosques in America are growing. So my plan to implement Sharia in the United States, okay, <laughs> is going well. No. Okay, so let's get into this news. According to a new report, while the overall number of mosques in the United States continues to grow, increasing numbers of African-American mosques are closing. In 2020, the U.S. Mosque Survey numbered 2,769 nice mosques, <laughs> an increase of 31% from the 2010 count of 2,106 mosques. Congressional prayers held in mosques on Friday, a practice known as Juma, uh, averaged 410 attendees before the pandemic in 2020. This was an increase over the 2010 figure of 353. Some 72% of mosques recorded a 10% or more increase in Juma prayer attendance during the reporting period. The 2010 survey found that 17% of America's mosques were in urban centers. That number decreased to 6% in the 2020 survey due to the growth of new mosques in suburban and rural areas and the closure of many African-American mosques in larger cities. As members of the first wave of African-American Muslims are getting older, many African-American mosques have struggled to remain open. Okay, I will twist this as a positive. Do, do you? I know, like it's it's. Do you know how I'm gonna show you that this is? A, do you have any guesses on how this is a positive? Um, this is due to immigration and birth rate, so that mm -hmm. means that there are like a bunch that will be leaving in about a generation. No, but that's also a good point. So <laughs> that was. Okay, sure, that that too, <laughs> but but that's not what I had in mind. What I had in mind is that this is a, not because of conversion, right? We have the numbers, like somebody was asking, Marcia was saying, wait, where is Marcia was vague, is this because of conversion? No, we have the numbers. Um, in North America, a lot of people are leaving, second generation Muslims are leaving Islam, right? So I don't know what the net effect is, but it's not increasing for conversion. So the reason why demands for mosques is increasing in um, in the U.S. is because of migration, right? There are more Muslims coming to the United States, right? So the reason why you can see this as a positive, right? This is not this is not a win for atheism. However, it's a win for secularism because the best place to be a muslim it's a non-islamic country right hey yo this is what okay. this is saying the best place for muslims to live are non-islamic countries muslims living in the united states muslims living in france muslims living in the uk as with the discrimination against them we don't deny that there's some there's a lot of anti-muslim bigotry while considering, while including that in the equation, their lives are still better than the average Muslim in Iran, in Saudi Arabia, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh. This is a win for secularism. Secularism is not just for atheists. Secularism is good for everyone, including religious people. And this is one sign that shows that. What do you guys think? Uh, I absolutely agree with you, Armin, and I think to your point about secularism isn't just for atheism, it's for religious people, and you were saying the best place to be a Muslim would be, you know, in a Western country like Europe or the United States, Australia, some place like that, um, shows you that, in my opinion, why secularism is so important, because it's the best protection religious people have, is to have a government that's neutral and secular so that there isn't one particular sect or faith that is 
above the other ones. It's absolutely the best place to live if you're any kind of a religious person because you're going to have much more freedom and protection of the law than you will in a Muslim country or even any other highly religious or, you know, government religion country. Exactly. Um, I have a question. Oh, Susie, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give some more interesting facts. So this report was actually produced by um, three different or, uh, well, they seem Islamically affiliated um, organizations, so, which is the Islamic Society of North America, the Center on Muslim Philanthropy, and the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding. Um, and it found that nearly 98% of American mosques are run by their local congregations, which um, I thought was very interesting. Um, I think that this reflects a lot of attitudes, a difference in attitudes we notice between places like America versus like certain um, communities in Western Europe, where there seems to be much more um, foreign influence into congregations. Here, they're finding that almost all of them are just like run by local congregations. And I think that has um, resulted in very different attitudes um, in these congregations. That's wow. speculation on my part. I don't know. What do you think about that? Wait, this is also. Well, I want to say something to your point is I think it's actually very valid to talk about the difference between the Muslim community and the Muslim demographics in the United States and in Europe and some other parts of the world, because the assimilation into the wider society is very well documented between for American Muslims, much more so than in some other Western countries where they're still protected by secular law and they have more rights and freedom, but there's more self ghettoizing and they're not as usually assimilated, more foreign influence. And also because of the protections under the law that religion is given and the kind of special category that religion is given in the United States, you have people who can open their, their version of their mosque in their community pretty much anywhere, anytime, anytime they would, you know, so there's not a body in the same way that's controlling that because they could buy a bunch of land in the middle of nowhere and make an Islamic community or open a mosque or because they have, there's so much religious freedom, so much pluralism and no one is controlling any of that. You control it yourself, which is very American that you have these communities that are running their own thing in their own way. Um, yeah, actually, by the way, a lot of the, a lot of the American Muslims are, are considered fake Muslims by Salafi Muslims. Uh, and they, you know, they are criticized American Muslims, like even Muslims that we consider to be conservative, um, are considered sellouts by a lot of Salafis, right? Like, um, and people like a lot of Western North American Muslims ha uh, have are seen by Salafi Muslims as Muslims who have accepted LGBT rights, who have accepted democracy, who have accepted women rights, who do not understand a, wom a woman roles in the family, and they they refer to these Muslims and what they believe in not as not Islam but a Western, an American approved version of Islam. That's why they, how they refer it to, right? And they, a lot of these Salafi Muslims consider these American Muslims um, to be the greatest threat to Islam more than the non-Muslims, more because they consider themselves as, they consider these as a threat to Islam because they, 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 they are a threat to young people because they seem like they're Muslim and they will come, they think like these are the people who will brainwash our young from within without not, and the, the younger generation wouldn't even have its guard up uh, against these ideas because they can't, they, they don't think that these are their ideological enemies because look, they're in mosque, they're praying. So they don't have their guards up and they think and with the name of Islam, they're coming out and they say like, you're selling 
ideas like LGBT and women rights and stuff like that to us. So they, they don't think like we, like at least we are not wearing a mask, right? Like for example, when we are speaking against Islam, we are upfront about it. And if a Muslim wants to def guard against that, then we are saying that, oh yeah, we're anti-Islam. So you don't have to, it's, it's hard for them to, um, they, they can tell people to have their guards up, right? But these American Muslims, it's harder. They think like they. It's harder to defend against them when it comes to their attack on Islam. And it's interesting. Like for example, people um, like Linda Sarsour um, and what's her name? Oh my God, what's her politician? Congresswoman. Um, Elon Omar. Omar. Elon Omar. Yeah, God damn it. Elon Omar also like Elon Omar and um, Linda Sarsour. They are. These are considered fake Muslims by. People like, I don't know, you know, one person we know here is like Daniel Hayegaju. They're constantly exposed for, they think exposed for showing some support for gay rights or saying stuff that is like the, the whole idea of working with the Democrats, uh, they consider that to be working with the enemy. Um, a lot of these conservative Muslims think that. Democrats are more dangerous. Like it's, it's interesting because a lot of Americans think like, oh, if you ask them which one is anti-Islam, um, Republicans or Democrats, most people, most people are like, well, Republicans are more aggressive against Islam, like, like the Muslim ban or all that. But Salafi Muslims, they think the Democrats are actually the more dangerous ones. They're like, look, the conservatives, at least they get some stuff right. They understand family values. They understand the role of women in society, the importance of, um, you know, traditional values and blah, 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 blah. But the Democrats are the ones that have thrown all the values out the window. And for some reason, American Muslims are uniting with the most evil ones <laughs> out there. Like, what, what the hell is, <laughs> like, what's wrong with you guys? Like, even with the, when it comes to the parties that you want to work with, you, you create, you wor you're working with the worst one. Um, you both want to speak. I don't know who wants to go. Go ahead, Susan. Um, well, one, this is just hilarious. Gossam, Gossam is saying, American Islam, you talk like Hamanay, Armin. <laughs> 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 um, so I wanted to touch on um, a few things. So mainly um, the decline of uh, African-American mosques. So for those who aren't aware, there were several movements of um, black Americans converting to Islam in America. There, in the 1960s and 70s, there was a huge movement kind of spurred on by the Nation of Islam, which by any stretch of the imagination, I think it's fair to say the Nation of Islam is a very deviant sect. <laughs> um, and they're and, American and particularly African, African American versus Centric, like yeah worldwide islam yeah and then there was another wave in the 1990s when various like um significant like rap artists converted and so there's there's been waves of black americans converting to islam um and there they had some interesting ideas um about why this may have tricked Triple, trickled off. So one of them is that the death of the former Nation of Islam leader Warth Dean Muhammad died in 2008, and the community like never really reconstituted itself, and it's been a barrier for growth in the Black Muslim community since. Um, and subsequent generations have proceeded to leave like that sect. Um, and also there have been a lot of people who I, and this is total speculation on my part, but I wouldn't be surprised if the immigration of more people from Islamic countries exposed more um, black Americans to like quote unquote real Islam. And they maybe were like, Oh wait, this nation of Islam stuff like doesn't, it's very deviant. It doesn't make as much sense. I wouldn't be surprised if they left that sort of mosque for a more traditional mosque. Um, and the author of this report, um, Asan Begbie, he, um, ju just cause it 
touches on what we were talking about earlier. He said that um, attendance of, of at mosques remains strong, particularly among the 18 to 34 age demographic, which is much stronger than that demographic in Jewish and Christian groups. And then he said, quote, my colleagues who work on Jewish and Christian congregations say to enjoy it while it lasts, that it is not sustainable. He said, I think it is too early to say a long-term decline is unavoidable or predetermined. So in he's saying, I don't think there is going to be a decline. I think we're going to continue to see an increase. Rivka? Okay, so this may sound like, I don't know, skeptical in a in a in in not necessarily a, a good way just like hmm i wonder based on everything you were saying about the fake muslims from the salafist point of view and american muslims aligning the you know some muslims aligning themselves with uh the democrats and some of the lgbt rights which are fine but then also there's this whole narrative among a lot of the woke wokistanis is that anything other than heterosexual white Christian is bad and all these other groups are somehow aligned because they're not that. So whether it's Nation of Islam, Sunni Islam, Shia Islam, uh, you know, Hindu temple in the town. There, so I wonder too if that sort of idea is what's maybe bringing more people into like maybe one kind of mosque instead of separate versions of it because uh and, and maybe i'm not being clear and i'm dancing around this because of youtube or i don't want to say I, i'm not i haven't fleshed it out yeah i but don't know what you mean what i mean is there is an assumption amongst a lot of the left that all anybody who's not white or christian they're all sort of of one brotherhood mm -hmm. so to mm -hmm. speak and they make these very grand monolithic statements about all black people all brown people all muslims all asians and so i was just commenting on your point of um very conservative people not thinking that this is actually real Islam and Muslims working with the Democrats and just how the demographics are changing for people here versus like immigrants who tend to be more conservative and may and right. so anyways, I, like I said, I haven't totally fleshed it out, but I think there's something here too that can be discussed about these, this identity merging. Right. Yeah, it's, an, it's a merger that is going to have a lot of issues. It is going to be a lot of conflict. We see this already. Like, it's not going to be as smooth as a lot of people assumed it was going to be. We already see this conflict. Uh, we, we, we're we seeing it more in Europe than in North America because in North America, they, North America has the advantage of having uh, a giant ocean between them and Islamic countries. So they get, there's a natural screening process that gets the type of Muslims that are more likely to become, um, um, you know, um, westernized and accept a, another ver different interpretation of Islam. But the conflict between left-leaning parties and the movement to accept Islam is become is going to become a lot more difficult in countries like United Kingdom and France, where you know they let in a Trojan horse that is now considers accepting LGBT rights a major red line. You know, so this is going to be a major conflict between leftists and you know Islamic movements. So it's it's just I just I'm just saying. I, all I'm saying is grab your popcorns for the next decade, okay? It's going to be a fun ride. <laughs> yep, for sure. Yeah, and th <laughs> thanks for kind of clear for for fleshing that out a little bit more, Armin, because that's kind of where I was going. That there is this issue with the leftist fetishization of Islam. Right. Right. 
Yeah, a lot of them actually have. Um, am I muted? No. A lot of them have wake woken up to this. That like, um, yeah, we <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Like some of in, them are like no small back part trick. because of the rise of the ex-Muslim movement, saying yeah. like, uh, guys, I don't know who told you differently, but this is a still an Abrahamic mindset. Like we got a lot of the same problems just because we're brown, we're not saints, okay? <laughs> like right, right. that's what okay, I mean by these monolithic generalizations, and it's also kind of the racism of liberals that bothers me hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe we will send you a free copy of our blasphemous art ebook and let me tell you it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below